us too. Hey, uh, we're rolling just whenever. Yeah, if All you right. want to do something to cut us in, go for it. Welcome back to Driftful Guitars, folks. Um, my name is Chris. We got Matt behind the camera as always. Um, today we're going to do a little video on how I go about buffing out my finishes on my guitars. Um, this is the guitar that I did when I, uh, for the pour filling series. So you have missed the part where I sprayed it. We are now two weeks. Yeah, I think we're about two weeks out from the last time you guys saw this guitar. So it has been sprayed. It's got 14 coats of nitrocellulose lacquer on it, Cardinal. Um, and it has been drying for 10 days now. Normally I would let it dry for two weeks, but we are on a very hard deadline on this guitar. So they are actually gonna come pick it up tomorrow. Um, and uh, so it's, we're gonna have hours to spare on this instrument. So I wanted to show you guys how I do that. I have learned from talking to other builders that I kinda go about this a little bit differently. And uh, part of what I do differently is during the spraying process, but um, we'll go over how I do just the buff out, which is gonna include the wet sanding to um, 5,000 grit and then a light buff out on the buffing wheel. So what I think makes my buff out process a little bit different than a lot of builders is um, I find that a lot of people, in my opinion, are too aggressive on the sandpapers on their level sands. So um, this guitar at this point, now that it's dried, is super smooth. I did a really good job of prepping it, as you guys saw in the um, pour filling series, so that as I sprayed my lacquer, I wasn't having to sand it back a whole bunch because the guitar was very flat. But the, what I have done by make, taking my time and spraying it very carefully and doing a very good flash coat for my last coat, this is super smooth. So instead of coming at it with, I find a lot of builders, when they go to do the buff out, they'll start with 400 grit to do their wet sand um, or 600 grit. My most coarse grit that I'm gonna hit this with is 1000 grit is where I'm gonna start at. So I'm gonna hit this with 1000, 1200, 1500, 2000, and then I'm gonna go with a 3000 and 5000 grit, um, like a micro mesh sandpaper. That is a little bit overkill, but the reason why I do the 3000 and 5000 grit sandpaper is so that I don't have to do the coarse buff on my buffing wheel. I skip the coarse and go straight to the medium, and so I'm only left with um, basically the medium and the fine buffing. Sometimes I use the course just to get rid of some small scratches, but so I will do that now. I'm gonna, I use, as you have seen in many videos, the Festool Rotex 90, um, the RODX 90 sander, which is the reason why I love the sander so much is mostly for this purpose. Um, what it does is allows me to wet sand um, and I can put this thing on so that the whole face of this spins in a full rotary direction, hence Rotex sander. Uh, and I disconnect the dust collector from it and then I can just get in here and go to work on this thing. Um, I've been using this sander for, gosh, three years now and it's just killer. So I will spray it. What I do is I hit this with some water um, and it's got, I don't know, three or four drops of, of laundry detergent in it and the laundry detergent is just acting as a lubricant. Um, so I'm just gonna hit this and we're gonna work ourselves around this whole guitar just to get it nice and level. I'm having to work around a little bit around this plug. I gotta be careful around there, but uh, that's because I'm putting in a, a coin. I'm in laying a coin into it. But, um, so I'm just gonna spray this with some, some water and get to work and you guys can watch along if Matt's got questions. So far so good, dude. He will ask the questions. Yeah, you've explained it pretty well. <laughs> Trick is to really make sure that you keep it nice and wet. You don't, the, the point of the water is to extract any sort of particulate matter that is coming off of the lacquer. And because what you don't want to do is grind that back into the finish. That's how you, you start chasing your own tail and you have swirl marks all over the whole guitar. So more water, the better. Um, you just took the um, exhaust off of your uh, sander just to keep water from blowing into it? Yeah, because this has got a dust collection system on it and I don't want it to suck up water. Right. So um, it's a pain in the butt to fully disconnect but uh, I've also set my sandpaper up so that the holes do not align, um, so that that way it's not trying to suck up a bunch of water into it. But yeah, so we're just gonna go to work on this real quick.
Okay, so you'll notice that the water is still sitting on here nice and smooth, a little bit milky, but what you don't want is it to turn into a paste. If, it, if it's becoming like paste on here, then you're not using enough water. Um, and so you want it to be still kind of very drippy like this. Wipe it down often, once again, to just extract as much of that, of the dust as possible. Um, I'm actually gonna pull the plug out. I don't know if you can tell. It's got a nice matte smooth finish now. Um, like me? Yeah, like Matt. <laughs> uh, I am not, you gotta remember, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use six different grades of sandpaper on here. So we don't need to get it completely perfect on this first knockdown. This thousand grit sandpaper is just the very first step in many. So uh, you don't wanna be too aggressive. And just like all sanding practices, that, just like I mentioned in, in previous videos, is um, you don't, you wanna be careful around the edges. That's where your biggest risk is, is, is um, sanding too thin on the edges of the guitar. So you just wanna be careful there. So as I, when I get around here, I'm gonna be very careful with the water because I don't wanna get water, too much water down inside the... Um, um, that's also why it's important to keep notes. I, on my, in my paint booth, I have a dry erase board where I put a, a hash mark every time I put a coat down. I keep notes on my finish schedule so that when I'm done, when I'm sitting here right now, I know exactly how much finish is on this guitar. I'm not going, oh, I think I remember I did, uh, I think I got nine coats on here. Or the worst case scenario, you think you've got like 12 coats and you've only got eight. And so you're a little bit more aggressive with your sandpaper. So it's important that you keep those notes so that you can have a good recollection of how thick this finish is. Also, for future purposes, if you start finding that your finishes aren't lasting very long um, or that they're, they're chipping, um, you can look at how much coats of lacquer you're putting on your guitar for for that purpose as well. But so a little bit a little bit more on here with the with the 1,000 grit. Okay, so I am pretty happy with that. Um, something I was thinking about just then was uh, another advantage to starting out with a thousand grit sandpaper as opposed to 600 is because I'm, I'm only going to be taking off the tiniest little bit. Um, I almost have no risk of sanding through with a thousand grit sandpaper. I'd have to be just like hanging out in one spot with my sander for like five minutes to, to sand through. So that's the other advantage. I can, I can kind of be more aggressive with my sander because the sandpaper itself isn't aggressive. So. That's good, I'm gonna to switch to 1200 grit. Okay, that felt good. I don't know if you noticed, I'm sure we did that in time-lapse. <laughs> but uh, I try to keep like a, I do, ha I tend to do halves. So I'll do like the outside perimeter of this half, line down the middle and slowly work my way to the inside. Same thing over here. That way I'm sure that I'm getting 100% coverage. It's hard to keep track. If you're just randomly going, it can be easy to miss spots. So you want to almost act like you're cutting the grass and just follow the lines. That's how I vacuum. Exactly. Uh, and, and miss a spot. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to be all rando, because it is very difficult to tell where, you, when you're, you're dealing with this grit sandpaper, it can be difficult to tell where you're. Uh... So the next is 1500. Same exact process. I'm just going to go and knock it down, knock it down, knock it down until we get to the 5000 grit. But, uh... And I do this in sections. I do the back. I do the top and then I do the sides. Once again, it's kind of just to keep track of things. Um, I will say when I, if you're doing this by hand, which a lot of people are, and this is how I did it for years, you're gonna use a sanding block and you're gonna follow the same techniques. You're gonna be using um, lots of water with, with soap in it for lubrication and just keeping it, make sure you're keeping your paper nice and clean. You should actually be soaking your high grit sandpapers in a bowl of water um, a couple hours before you, you get going. I've heard that that really helps. I've never done it. Uh, but um, just making sure that you're once again not grinding in the finish into scratches on the on the top. But uh, this, I went from taking a full day to buff out guitars to when I switched over to this, I can do a full buff out in like an hour and a half, which is. Okay. We'll wipe her down again. You're gonna go through a lot of paper towels with this. I would rather have a bunch of throw out paper towels and keeping this super clean than not wiping it down and being all caked on. So that's it. Like, even if we don't do time-lapse, I think Matt and I have been, what's the camera say? 16 minutes. 
and that includes talking, that we're already, I could take this to the buffing wheel now if I wanted to, if I wanted to go straight to the course. Um, but if you have a good sander and, you, and you've done a good job on your, on your lacquer spraying and gotten the surface super flat, um, you, you'll save a bunch of time here. I, um, I keep talking about the previous video, but you'll hear me say in the, the um, pour filling and the finished prep video, you're gonna have to spend the time somewhere. So because I spent the time on the prepping end, it took me 15 minutes to get this guitar ready for buffing. Um, if I wouldn't have taken the time on that, I'd be spending more time here. So that's just how I like to spend my time. Um, like I said, I could buff this now. Can you get a shot, Matt, of, yeah. to see how, you can just start to see it's starting to get shiny. It's starting to get to a point where at an angle, it'll, be, uh, it'll catch the light from over here. Um, so you could buff that. So what I'm gonna do now is I've got these Festool, this is a 2000 grit, but it's like a, it's like a meshy, soft foam, weird, I don't know if you call it sandpaper. It's interesting. That's the 2000 grit. And then I've also got somewhere around here, my 3000 uh, grit. I actually get this stuff from the O'Reilly Auto Parts. It's a 3M 5000 grit micro mesh uh, uh, Trizact. And I've, I've got it in 3000 grit too. I'll put links in the, in the description on here for all of the sandpapers that I'm using. Um, I'll put them for the Festool sanders as well as um, for hand sanding um, so that you guys can get this. This stuff, this 3M Trizac stuff has been incredible for, for getting really good finishes. But So we'll do the 2000. I put this on the full rotary mode. This almost doesn't actually take off anything. You, you'll see that I'm not getting like a milky surface on here with this. So this is at a point now where you're basically, you're, you're already kind of buffing. This is less sanding than it is buffing at 2000 grit. Okay, so I found the 3000 grit and the 5000 grit. Uh, pro tip, so we would, like, once again, I'm gonna put this link in the bio, or in the description, this, this Trizact um, sandpaper that I use comes in squares like this, or rectangles. What I do is I actually just take it and I trace it with my razor blade and create um, these rounds out of it because they're they're hook and loop on the back. So the nice thing is you just pop it on and you're good to go. It's super cool. So this is 3000 grit, basically a polisher at this point. So same exact thing. So now you'll see it's actually truly almost looks like I'm buffing it at this point. Bring that in here, Matt. You'll see it's starting to get actually a glossy finish. You see how much shinier that is in the Ooh, camera? Yeah. Yeah. So one more grit, 5,000 grit, and we're gonna be ready to, to, to be done with the back already. Uh, so I don't know if I'm catching the glare there. Oh uh, yeah. So yeah, that's- It's looking a lot more uh, yeah. mirror-like. Sure. Yeah, and that literally that's still just sandpaper. I haven't even started buffing on this guitar yet. So <laughs> that's cool. That's, that's kind of what I think makes my process a little bit different than a lot of people that I've spoken to. I mean, obviously it's not like I'd run into guitar builders every day, but um, is just taking my time on one end, saves me time on this end, and now I've, I've almost prevented a issue of burning through my lacquer because at a thousand grit sandpaper is my coarsest, like I said, you'd have to spend a lot of time in one spot to really burn through. So I've, I basically retained the amount of lacquer that I've got on this guitar. Um, the only thing that's really different on the top is that I really want to get um, some good rags down inside here so that I don't um, get a bunch of water and, and soap down inside there and drip all over the label and on the inside because it's hard to clean out. I'm minding you um, that I've already done all my, you know, when I was spraying the guitar, I got all the drop fills perfect inside my abalone trim. Um, everything's really perfectly flat on here. I do not remove my tape until after I've buffed out the guitar because I want to keep everything sealed from the moisture. The top of the guitar on, on lighter colored woods like spruces tends to hide the scratches more. Dark wood, will show you every little scratch. Um, so you wanna take your time on the top, even though you might think that you're further along than you are, because when you go to buff it out, you realize that there are little micro scratches in there. So you, I just kinda of keep the same rhythm on the top. Um, rhythm is a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> but so I'm gonna start back at 1,000 grit, and we're gonna do the same thing. If Matt has questions, we will stop. Um, and I won't say a whole lot during this top end side. Um, the, the sides 
it's the same process too, but it's just a little bit, uh, a little bit more careful. But uh, so yeah, we'll just we'll just do that. Um, good lighting is super important. I've got really good LED lights all over my workbench, good lights in the shop. If you're not in a well-lit area, you can really miss the boat here. So I've designed my shop to be really good for that. My spray booth is incredibly well lit. That's, that's a consideration too when you're doing your buff out is make sure you're in a good area. Make sure your workbench is clean of any um, hard surfaces or any hard things that can be abrasive, no sandpaper. Uh, I've always set it down on this, this thick um, sh uh, beach towel as a, as a cushion too. Some people might be wondering why I'm not using the um, vacuum clamp and that's why I don't want to, at this point now we're being very careful with the scratches and stuff like that. But uh, that was 1500, so we're on to 2000. Okay, so the top is done, back is done. I'm uh, just wiping it down and we're gonna be ready to move on to the sides. Uh, I'm gonna put a link to these, um, these good shop towels. They're just the, uh, the Scott shop rags, all purpose shop rags. They work really well. I find that a lot of um, just like grocery store uh, paper towels are almost like they're too scratchy. You know, this, these are really nice and soft. Uh, been using them for years with great success. So, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Looks really good. I was didn't get any drops of anything. I got a couple splatter marks on the inside that I'll wipe out. But um, process is the same on the sides. I will do a lot of times have to do by hand in the waste uh, and in the cutaway area. But you know, what are you gonna do? The sander won't fit in there. So this actually goes pretty quick, and then it's going to be ready for buff out. I was going to mention too on the um, on the neck. I ended up doing a satin finish on this neck, so I don't have to do the buff out on there. The same thing would apply on this on a neck as we've done here. I normally wouldn't have removed the um, tape off the the fretboard yet. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to buff out the front of this headstock just so that it matches the guitar. So I, on my on my satin necks, I do a glossy front of the headstock because it just looks really nice. So yeah, you won't see any of my neck buffing. Same thing though. So we'll do the sides real quick and then I'll take you guys over to the buffing wheel and show you how I do that. All right. So we skipped over the sides there a little bit, but that's okay because it's the exact same thing, rinse and repeat. Um, and we are now officially sanded and leveled and uh, ready to go to the buffer.